In this video, I'll walk you through the top 10 Excel functions for beginners, step by step, with real examples and simple explanations. If you're just getting started with Excel, or you want a solid refresher, this guide is all you need. Let's get started with the very first formula. In this table, we have a list of product IDs, product names, prices, and stock levels. Now let's use the XLOOKUP function to find the product name and stock based on a given product ID. Click on the first cell under XLOOKUP product name and type TOSOR XLOOKUP G5, B5 to B14, C5 to C14, not found. This formula looks for the product ID from cell G5 in the ID column and returns the corresponding product name from the next column. If the ID doesn't exist, it shows not found. To retrieve the stock quantity for the same product, use XLOOKUP again, but this time with the stock column as the return range. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of product IDs, product names, prices, and stock levels. Now let's use the VLOOKUP function to find the product name and stock based on a given product ID. Click on the first cell under VLOOKUP product name and type VLOOKUP G5, B$4 to E$14, 2, false. This formula looks for the product ID from cell G5 in the ID column and returns the corresponding product name from the next column. If the ID doesn't exist, it shows number not available error. To retrieve the stock quantity for the same product, use VLOOKUP again but this time with the stock column as the return range. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of dates when users joined or made updates. Now, we want to create a message that says exactly when each update happened. Let's say we try this formula. Last updated on and B5. It might seem correct, but instead of showing the full date, Excel returns something like last updated on 45,707, which is the serial number of the date. To fix that, we'll use the text function to properly format the date. Click on the cell last updated on and text B8, DD, M, 4, M, 4, Y. This converts the serial number into a readable format like 25 May 2025 and adds it to your custom message and drag it down to apply it to the rest. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of products with their ID, name, price, and quantity. Now let's use the index function to return a value based on a specific row and column number. For example, if we want to return the value from row 1, column 1 of this range, we use equal sign index B5 E14 1 1. This gives us the product ID of the first item, 101. Now let's try another one. If we want the value from row 7, column 3, which is the price of the seventh product, we type equal sign index B5 E14 7 3. This returns $35. So the index function simply picks a value from any row and column you specify within a given range. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of products with their IDs, names, prices, and quantities. Now let's use the MATCH function to find the position of a specific value in the product ID column. We'll start with an exact match. Click on the first result cell and type equals MATCH G5, B5 to B14, 0. This looks for the value 105 in the product ID column and returns its position. In this case, row 6 in the range. Now let's try approximate matching. To find the largest value less than or equal to 106 use equals match G6, B5 to B14, 1. And to find the smallest value greater than or equal to 99, try equals match G7, B5 to B14, negative 1. Since the list isn't sorted in descending order, this one returns an error. So remember, 
Use zero for exact match one for largest value less than or equal. Negative one for smallest value greater than or equal. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have the weekdays, dinner items, and their prices. Now let's use index plus match together to find the dinner cost for any given day. We'll combine these two functions to make a powerful lookup formula. Click on the first cell under weekday cost, index plus match, and type index B $5 to D $11, match F5, B $5 to B $11, 0, 3. Here's what it does. Match finds the row number that matches the weekday in column F. Index then uses that row in column 3 to return the corresponding price press enter and drag the formula down to calculate the price for each selected day. This method is more flexible than VLOOKUP, especially when your data layout changes. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have first names and last names listed separately. Now let's combine them to create full names. To do that, we'll use the CONCAT function. Click on the first cell under Full Name CONCAT and type equal sign CONCAT B5 space C5. This formula joins the first name and last name with a space in between. You can also use a comma, dash or any other symbol instead of a space. For example, equal sign CONCAT B5 comma C5 would return Alice Johnson and then drag the formula down to apply it to the entire list. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have first names and last names listed separately. Now let's combine them to create full names. To do that, we'll use the concatenate function. Click on the first cell under full name concatenate and type equal sign concatenate B5 space C5. This formula joins the first name and last name with a space in between. You can also use a comma, dash or any other symbol instead of a space. For example, equal sign concatenate B5, comma, C5 would return Alice Johnson. And then drag the formula down to apply it to the entire list. You might be wondering, what's the difference between concat and concatenate in Excel? They both do the same thing. They combine text from multiple cells. The key difference is concat is the newer, more modern function. Concatenate is the older version and is now considered deprecated, which means it's still available but not recommended for new formulas. So, whenever possible, you should use concat, especially in newer versions of Excel like 365 or Excel 2019 Plus. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have first names and last names in separate columns. Let's combine them into full names, even if some cells might be empty. To do that, we'll use the text join function. Click on the first cell under full name text join and type equals text join open parenthesis space comma true comma b5 colon c five close parenthesis. This formula joins the values from both cells using a space. The second argument, true, tells Excel to ignore any empty cells in the range. Just like with concat or concatenate, you can replace the space with a comma, dash, or any separator you prefer. For example, text join, comma, true, B5 to C5 will return Alice Johnson. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the list. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of full names. Some of these names may include extra spaces, either at the beginning, at the end, or even between words. To clean this up, we'll use the trim function. Click on the first cell under full name trim and type equals trim B5. This formula removes all unnecessary spaces, leaving just a single space between each word, and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the list. You got it. Was that helpful? In the next video, we'll dive into even more powerful Excel tricks.
Make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. See you soon.